quickly for five seconds, Template Monster has the best WordPress video YouTube channel award. And some of my subscribers awesomely nominated me for it. So I'm in there, I'm in the list, and you can vote for me. Link in the description if you think I'm a best WordPress YouTube channel. Thank you so much and back into the video. So I'm gonna be a little vulnerable in this video and show you the first eight websites I've ever made. These would be the websites I made in high school and college. I'm quite sentimental sometimes, so I do have backups of all these sites that I've made during that time. And I thought it would be fun to look at these sites and maybe make fun of them a little bit because I've come a long way and see what I did good on the site. And more interestingly, the mistakes I made. And I'm talking about the exact mistakes I tell people to stop making in my videos that I made myself. And honestly, there are some parts of these websites that I look back at and they make me cringe. So hopefully this should be fun. Feel free to shit on my websites in the comments. I feel some of them are good and some of them I don't ever wanna see again. So here are the websites we're gonna look at. I'll do my best to explain what the context of these websites were and some of the background detail on them. Let's start with my first website ever. This is my favorite one. It means a lot to me and it holds up pretty good. Without further ado, here it is. This website is all about the peregrine falcon, a bird. I had to make this website for a project in high school. I actually got pretty interested in the peregrine falcon after watching this particular video on it, which I'll link in the description. I highly recommend you watch it. It showcases how this bird basically flies up really high and dive bombs its prey. The video on it is super cool, so I dedicated a website to it. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. This being my very first website, this is actually really good. I was still learning HTML and CSS when I made this. Hell, I was still new to Photoshop at this time too. In that background image of the peregrine and the grass in the background, I did myself in Photoshop. Browsing through the other pages, they are very similar to one another. I think the colors work really well on this site, but if I were to look at some general improvements, I would change all the fonts to something more modern. One thing too is on the subspecies page, there is a list of subspecies. This list actually scrolls down vertically if you hover over it with a mouse, which is a horrible user experience. However, the biggest mistake about this website is that it's not responsive at all. And that's because I didn't know about media queries at this time too. So I've definitely learned a lot since this site, but overall it looks really good. And the user experience is mostly there, just not on mobile. One more little interesting thing is that this website was done in high school, but later in college, I actually did a revamp of this site. Basically a version two that modernized it with my better web design skills. But unfortunately, it's the only site I did not have a backup of. So I don't have it anymore. However, what I do have is a screenshot of the hero section. And this is what it looked like. Yes, there is a very obvious user experience mistake I made here, but overall, I assure you the website was an improvement. There's something else about this website too that I hope everyone is gonna find hilarious. This font I used in the navigation is actually set to cursive using CSS. Because of course you can set fonts using keywords like serif or sans serif. Well, cursive is another one. You are actually seeing this site in Chrome using a Mac. This font is actually called Apple Chancery, which means that this font is macOS specific. And if you view this website on a Windows machine, it defaults to Comic Sans. Yes, that means my very first website I made with Comic Sans. I didn't know this at the time because all the computers in my high school class were all Macs because it was a graphic design class but I take full responsibility for my actions. I apologize. Next up is the pencil shop. This is one of the first websites I made in my shop series where I have the pencil shop, the kite shop, and the letter shop. Not sure why I had the idea to do that, but I wanted to have like a theme, so I just did it like that. This would be the first e-commerce site I made and designed in college. Obviously, with no actual e-commerce functionality though, this is all a hand-coded HTML and CSS site. The inspiration for the design of this website is actually entirely based off of this single image. I don't know why I thought this image of two pencils on a yellow table was so pleasing to me, but I thought it was enough to build an entire website around it. The logo I stole completely off the internet because I thought it looked cool, because it is. I think this site has less user experience mistakes than some of my other beginning websites. Looking back at it, one thing I really like is the filter area here. It was supposed to work that the category you select change this box sub filter area to show more specific options based on what you selected. 
I think in terms of user experience, this is done quite intuitively because even after the many years of not looking at it, I still came back to it and instinctively knew how it would work. In terms of how pretty it looks, yeah, lots of improvements to be made there. One strange design decision I made was to have the footer be this blurred background image. I remember the reason why I did it is just because I thought it looked good. And now when I look at it, it seems very out of place. There's a possibility that the text readability might be affected by this image, but overall I think it just looks awkward to have a background image in the footer. It really goes to show how much of design is just personal opinions at the time of designing. You know, there's no theory or structure or reason behind it. It's just you think it looks cool at the time, so you do it. Very interesting. Let's move on to the next site, The Letter Shop. This is another college project site. Of course, like all the other sites so far, it's completely made up and just for school project purposes. This is a site where I started playing around with more decorative elements. You can see the different shapes and section transitions I made. I even made this envelope that's in pure CSS that looks awful, but I was really proud of at the time. And then there's this letter designer thing I made, which you could actually change the preview of your letter and it would actually update the letter preview, which I got a lot of bonus points for. The rest of the pages were pretty similar to the homepage. Overall, the user experience on this site is pretty good. It is a very usable and intuitive site, except for these plus icons that are supposed to be buttons to see more reviews, for example. This should actually be a button or some kind of label saying more review. As for design, there are definitely some choices I would do differently. Like these boxes would look a whole lot better if the box shadow was lessened, there was more padding, and there was a bit of a border radius. And that font, I would definitely change that font. Let's move on to the next sites. And trust me, they get a lot better. The Kite Shop. The Kite Shop is another pretty cool website. It's another college one as well. It's a fake e-commerce website that was supposed to have some sort of jQuery widget implemented into it for the project. This site was a team project too, and I had two partners. And the widget I had created for this was actually me learning jQuery at the time. And it was this wind speed at the top. It actually connected to a real weather API and got the speed of the wind based on your location, which I thought was a pretty cool idea because it fit in with the theme of kites. And check this out. It's the first time I used position sticky in CSS. This is incredible. This link section is really cool. I think I was heavily inspired from another website, so I can't take all the credit for it. But what I did do on my own is these little people at the bottom flying kites. Super cute. And that's mostly the site. The other pages aren't too interesting. It's just the same content with some text. There are some improvements to be made, like the line height on this H1. The slider is useless and should be removed. The prices look very visually the same as the add to cart button. And I would actually change up the body font. The font used here, which is called Josephine Sans, is a good display font, but I think it's better paired with a good body font like Open Sans. Next up is Red Century. So this website is actually my first WordPress site. And it's just when I began learning WordPress in college. And because it's WordPress, I only have access to the homepage because all the other pages were part of the CMS, I guess. And so the homepage is the only page that's hard coded or something. So it's the only one we can look at. This was the first time I made a website with a navigation on the left. I think it's a fun design choice, but I still recommend having navigations at the top. But it can work for small websites that don't have many pages. When it comes to this site, I do like the colors and the layout has some nice asymmetry in there. But overall, there's not much hierarchy going on here at all. Like this first section almost has two sections of content in one. It has what kind of buildings they do, like almost services. And then just to the left of it, there are like portfolio pieces. Organizationally, it makes no sense. And that button too, that doesn't look like a button at all. And one strange choice I made was to separate the sections with headings, but they're inside their own red background color sections. This is not intuitive at all. The headings should be in their same respective visual sections like this. And then this button layout is unique. It's a little more interesting than a standard button, but it's off to the side and it looks very disconnected from the content it belongs with, especially on a large screen size. And then the last thing I did wrong was the complete lack of a useful footer. There's no links at all. There's no call to action, even though it's a fake business. And overall, it could be a lot more useful than what I made here. And that's Red Century. It's not horrible, but I definitely made some awkward design decisions with this one. 
The Seaway Harbor Taxi. This is the website I made in college, but it wasn't for a project. I just made this one for fun. And if you see the logo, it says SHT. I'm not sure if I meant to do that back then, but now looking at it, I think it's pretty funny. I really like the design of this website. I think the icons, the images, and the colors all go really well together. This is when I was trying to put a little more effort into the design. So I started adding more background images and little decorations to make the site a little bit better. This is a one page site, so there's not much to it, but there are a couple mistakes I've made here that I do want to point out. First up is this we're open heading. This is not visually connected with the content it should be with. So I would just move that down with where it should be. This our guarantee heading is very redundant and useless. I'm not sure why I did this. And the thing I really hate myself for doing is making this text all justified. Of course, the reason why I did it is because I thought it looked better. But at the time, I didn't know that justified text had a negative impact on user experience. This is definitely not a mistake I would make today. For reasons why, check out my text alignment video. But let's move on to the next one because we have a couple more to get through. This is Tea Tree, which is another website where I began trying to put more effort into the design to get a little better. This site is another college project where I had to come up with some fake e-commerce website. This website makes what I believe is another web design mistake, which is using three different fonts. So like some of the other sites I made, I made some strange font choices. This site is basically the homepage. There is a product page, but it's the same content that the homepage has. What I like about this site is I think the colors, images, and icons, and at least one of the fonts, go quite nicely together. There are a few user experience mistakes I made here. The biggest one being the product images, they're zoomed in. If I was interested in buying a sweater or a shirt, I would want to see the full thing, not this zoomed in version. In fact, I did the zooming thing on purpose because I thought it looked better because the size would make it more like a square column in appearance. But I didn't think about the user at all when I made that decision. If I zoom out of it now, it feels much more valuable to the user to see the full product in view. I could have solved my column issue just by using a faint border around the items. With some more CSS, it could be so much better. That's another example of me choosing what looks better over user experience. Even though if I just had the knowledge or tried harder, that a solution could be found to satisfy both UI and UX. The next thing I'll critique is these buttons. They should not be full width. They look a lot less like buttons this way, and it's quite jarring to look at. But other than that, I think this site is pretty good. I made a few mistakes, but not bad. The last website I'm gonna talk about today is quite a special one. This is my first client-facing website ever. They are called Intanda. They are, of course, a real tourism organization in Uganda, and this served as the end of the year and course, actually, final project. It was the college, well, the professor, that facilitated getting the client and setting up all the meetings to work with them to walk us through what a real client scenario would look like. And this was actually pretty helpful. It put us on the spot and we had to ask the right questions to a real client, talk to them via email, get their content, and obviously make the site. This was a team project as well, but I kind of carried everyone through it. So the design is like 99% mine. But what you're looking at is actually a restoration of the site. Because a couple of months ago, their hosting actually deleted their site. So I tried to restore it based on an old backup I had, but it's not exactly the way it was. Hence why this weird text is at the top. Same with this map information as well that somehow broke. But I was really proud of this design back then. I think it still looks quite good. The fonts I used are good. The colors are good. And I went with the side navigation again. I guess I kind of had a thing for it back then. Not sure why. It probably could have been a lot better to have a top navigation in this case, because then I could have a call to action maybe. And of course that logo looks horrible on a green background. So I would definitely change that too. Some more mistakes can be found on the tours page. I put like everything behind an accordion or a tab. It's definitely not what I would do today. I would do my best to present the information visible on the page instead of having someone to toggle it open to see the content. I think the tabs work a bit more than the toggles as it makes a little more sense, but on pricing, it could easily be put into a two column layout with all that empty space on the right side. Back on the homepage, there is one more user experience mistake I made. Here is the take action section. 
It has save the well and a donate button. The learn more is supposed to be related to save the well, but visually it's not because this other section donate is right beside it. To solve this, you could just use a simple margin on the right and it could group the items in a more intuitive way. But I think this is still a strange layout, so I would change the order of Save the Well content section to be on the left. I would actually do an entire different layout for this section, but if I wanted to do some small tweaks, I would do that. Those websites, I believe, were mostly in order. But looking back at them, it's kind of interesting to see how I've learned over the years. First, I started simple, made a website that worked. Then I wanted to make it more modern and actually be responsive. Then, which I think is hilarious, and also that people learning web development like to make this mistake all the time, which is that I was trying to show off my skills in development too much, even at the cost of the thing actually making sense. Next, I started to design a bit better using more decorative elements and putting more attention into the detail. And then I just kind of kept on improving the design and unknowingly improving user experience stuff. I wonder if this is a similar path to any of you guys that have been learning web design. Out of all of them, I think the Peregrine Falcon site is probably my favorite. I don't know why, maybe I'm just sentimental. But I hope this video was meaningful to you in some sort of way. If you want to be a better web designer or developer, check out my other videos.